My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. Because people want to make friends, I'm just trying to make a little money. My job is not just to explain, but to entertain, to teach. We do it all. Call me, 1-800-743-CBC. Tweet me at Jim Kramer. Now that Wall Street finally realizes that we are in a bull market, in fact, we've been in one since inflation peaked last fall, we have to ask ourselves what could upend the juggernaut. I spent a lot of time defending the rally from a legion of critics who doubted every move higher until we were already up huge from the lows. But today, my colleague David Faber asked me what could derail this market and its key leaders. What would slay the bull? I gave him a glib answer about inflation. I know that's not good enough, and I had to spend the whole day trying to figure out a real response. And that's what you're going to get right now. Let me tell you what could potentially slaughter this bull. An idea I'm willing to entertain after a nice day. Dow gained 109 points. s and advanced 0.24%. NASDAQ edged up ever so slightly, 0.03%. The first bull slayer really is inflation. The best performers of late, the Microsofts, the Apples, the Alphabets, the Adobes, are going up on the same news again and again at the same time. This is what's known as multiple expansion. Wall Street's willing to pay more for the stocks in a world with lower inflation and lower bond yields than I think they should. I would prefer stocks to go up on changes in fundamentals. No, they're going up on a change in perception. Of course, because this perception not accelerated earnings growth, the whole move could turn on a dime if inflation flares up again. A couple of red-hot housing numbers, maybe a pickup in wage inflation as all the infrastructure jobs hit us next year. Well, that would put an end to the tech stock leadership that's been at the forefront of this rally because momentum is indeed a two-way street. Bye, so, bye, so, bye. So. The second bull slayers related more inflation would convince the Fed that it needs to raise interest rates aggressively to the point where short term treasuries become way too attractive versus any stock. If short rates get high enough, money will indeed flow out of this market like water, and they aren't that far from being that way. I mean, look, I doubt it'll be necessary for the Fed to take them up so high, but, well, it would easily slaughter the bull, and the Fed could do that. Third, we could be toppled by something I really despise, and I happen to despise froth. Yeah, froth. When the positive action just gets way too crazy, too frantic. Yes, the frantic desire to throw money at anything remotely related to AI has me absolutely worried. Yes, it's true, Microsoft's charging a great deal for its co-pilot AI product, so its stock deserved to run on the news yesterday. But today, Apple jumped on news that it's contemplating generative AI, at least a tool, while Salesforce soared when it announced its AI price chart. These are not events that should be tacking on billions and billions of additional market capitalization. That's part of the market's egregious, froth, chimerical moves, frankly. Needless to say, the linchpin for all of AI is NVIDIA, and NVIDIA, if it ever falters, well, that could crush the entire AI move. I can't imagine what it would take to topple NVIDIA here, but unimaginable things happen all the time. Of course, I don't think it's likely, which is why we own it for the charitable trust, and we don't trade it. Fourth bull slayer, these are all, remember, just perspective, and it's just putting it in context of what could happen that could go wrong, is the exogenous. I'm talking about China wanting to invade Taiwan. If they can successfully take it over, and please remember, they think it's theirs already, that would be a disaster for the U.S. economy because so many of our semiconductors come from Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party probably wouldn't do this. Why? Because they run the risk of starting World War III. But the chances of this happening are much higher than I'd like to be. I mean, for instance, the moment Janet Yellen left China after supposedly productive meetings, the PRC launched yet another flyover of Taiwanese airspace. It's not inconceivable that they, they risk trying to take it over. Nobody thought Russia would be crazy enough to invade Ukraine, did it? But it still happened. Hey, fifth, speaking of Ukraine, without the right equipment from the West, it's looking like this war could turn into a long and bloody stalemate. And that is not what we want. Then again, we got to wonder what Putin might do if Ukraine has a breakthrough. Maybe he's nuts enough to roll out the nukes. Not something Wall Street wants to be worried about. Here's hoping that the next coup attempt succeeds. 
Ukraine needs jets and helicopters from the West, or this war is going on a, going, go on a long time, and jets and helicopters do not seem to be in the cars. Six bull slayer right now, we have a dearth of IPOs and secondary offerings. But when you listen to James Gorman, the outgoing CEO of Morgan Stanley the other day, it sounds like he's seeing some green shoots in the equity market. If we get a ton of IPOs and a ton of insider selling stock, that excess supply could cause the market to roll over. Right now, we're not far from that. Uh, no, actually, I should say we're in the last few days. I don't feel that way, but we actually are historically. And uh, it's not really a factor. There just isn't that much stock for sale up here, or we wouldn't be seeing such outside moves. But if the IPO market comes back in a big way, that's going to be a big problem for the average. It's not yet. Seventh, the bull dies if we actually have a recession. Well, this is always a possibility. We get earnings from all the biggest banks, and they're certainly not seeing any cracks in the edifice. The consumer's strong. Credit's not being abused. Businesses are very solvent. There's not even that much pressure on commercial real estate. The hard landing scenario requires all those things to be happening. The average person has far more cash than they did in 2019. These are there are far more jobs available than there are people. Unemployment is still near the record lows. I mean, companies in the service industry keep expanding as more and more people are traveling, or at least going out after spending so long working from home. These are not arbiters of recession. They're the exact opposite. Eighth, the bulls might go to the slaughterhouse once the short sellers have covered all their shorts. Right now, the bears are being crushed, okay? Uh, Carvana, one of the most heavily shorted stocks of our time has run from $3 to $55, more on that later. And we've got a ton of fintech stocks making similar huge moves thanks to short squeezes. Money managers were just shorting all sorts of stocks very aggressively in anticipation of recession that doesn't seem to be coming. But eventually the shorts will finish buying back their stock to close out their losing short positions. And even if that doesn't slay the bull, it's going to hurt the bull. Ninth, potential bull killer, if we have another serious bank run that nobody saw coming. So far, no regional has shown anything like what Silicon Valley Bank or First Republic has happened did. But we didn't see them coming. Let's not get cocky. Finally, maybe companies don't deliver on earnings that could put the bull down. Yes, it could. Maybe there's no turn in Amazon Web Services, so Amazon takes numbers down. Maybe Apple doesn't deliver on the hardware and there's a service revenue shortfall. Maybe Alphabet shows no real growth and causes a cloud price war. Maybe the Justice Department scores a plum when it goes after Alphabet for monopolistic pricing. Maybe Meta spends too much money on its Meta product and not enough on Reels. Maybe the core of Microsoft turns out to be not doing as well. Maybe Netflix is really indeed worried about the future. We could see some shortfalls in healthcare, especially pharma, as part of the slightly under-the-radar provision in the Inflation Reduction Act that the drug companies claim could crush their earnings because it would let Medicare negotiate lower prices. Now, I don't know how many of these negatives would have to surface to slaughter the bull. <laughs> But there are possibilities. The bottom line, though, there's enough money still betting on a recession or sitting on the sidelines of short-term treasuries that I think this bull can still have forward momentum. Sure, something could go badly wrong. But for the moment, I think we're too early into this move for it to end anytime soon. So many investors are only just waking up right now to the fact that a bull market even exists, which makes it mighty hard to conjure up a serious bear thesis. Max in Illinois. Max. Hey, Jim. Uh, so I know you like the beverage giant PepsiCo, but I want to talk about snacks, pets, and dividends, all three of which General Mills does well. And their stock dropped after a recent forecast citing inflationary choppers, but General Mills has been pretty resilient during recessions and market sell-off. So uh, I want to hear, what are you thinking on General Mills? People worried about the chart. People worried that the dividend isn't high enough to protect itself from bonds. People worry about the consumer practice good stocks. I am not worried about those. I think General Mills is a great long-term stock, and I think you should own it. Dan in Virginia. Dan. Hello, Jim. Appreciate you taking my call. Of Long course. Long-time viewer, first-time caller. I'm actually calling in for my dad, who's almost 90 years young and has been yes. a decades-long shareholder of Dominion Energy. It had a post-pandemic high of around $87, but can't seem to break out of a, a narrow trading range in the low 50s these days. It's a big part of his portfolio, and would love to know your thoughts. I don't the trust Hokies. it. Oh, yeah. I love the Hokies. Where, where's Brian Sullivan? I don't trust Dominion. I think something's wrong. I want them to come on, and I want them to explain to me how they could be paying such a high dividend, given the fact that there's so many things that I think are checkered about it. Letter D is not my favorite. And, but congratulations still to your dad for being 90 years young. Rob, Robert Robert in Pennsylvania. Robert. Jim, thanks for taking my call. Of course. Jim, thanks to you and to the club, which I'm a member, I realized some gains the artificial intelligence. I'm well, looking thanks. ahead now. Yeah, I'm looking ahead now for businesses who may imp be implementing AI. 
I'm thinking of a stock. Call letters, G-E-H-C, G-E Healthcare Technologies, Inc. What do you think? Okay, they report next week. You're a club member, so you know we've been buying the stock. Why? Because you're going to need an MRI before you get into any of the Alzheimer's programs. And that's how they're going to benefit. AI, they're going to have to talk about on the call, because I, right now, do not know them as such. But let's find out. And thank you for being a member of the CNBC Investing Club. Wall Street's finally realized we're in a bull market. And I think the bull still has forward momentum. On Mad Money tonight, it seems like things have settled into the regional banking crisis. So I'm going straight to the source with First Horizon CEO to see how things stand now. Then Carvana announced earnings this morning earlier early than expected. The stock was down ahead of time. Wrong. And after sharing plans for a big restructuring of the company's debt, I'm learning more with the company's top brass. And ahead of the hotly anticipated Barbie movie, I'm seeing if this could be the inflection point for the toy maker. Mattel CEO will be with us. Stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.